I will, I will remember to resume recording, which I just did. I'm muting everybody. Okay. All right, so let's get going. All right, Trini, come off of that uh, roller. We're ready to go. All right, so find yourself a nice, comfortable seat. I pulled out Mark Nepo again. Um, have you ever, and, and you know, of course I'm not looking for an answer, I'm just bring to mind, um, any kind of conflict that you've had where someone did something wrong or you felt wronged and you just carry this heavy burden along with you. And, and you know, if you get angry with someone, half the time the other person isn't even aware of it. And there's this thing about forgiveness and it really has nothing to do with the other person and more to do with ourselves because we are our own worst enemy that we carry around that grudge or that weight or that thought or we constantly replay in our minds, you know, how we felt wronged. So it's such a lovely um, feeling when we can finally let that go and it's a lot easier said than done. So today we'll be playing with um, some height, some, some flying, some um, feeling light, feeling heavy, and we'll play around with the feet a little bit. But getting back to Mark Nepo, he says, as anyone who has ever been wronged can attest, in order to keep the fire for justice burning, we need to keep burning our wounds, open as perpetual evidence. Living like this, it is impossible to heal. Forgiveness has deeper rewards than excusing someone for how they hurt us. The deeper healing comes in the exchange of our resentments for inner freedom. At last, the wound, even if never acknowledged by the other person, can heal and our lives can continue. It's useful to realize that the word forgive originally meant to give and receive, to give for. In keeping with the original meaning, we can see that the inner reward for forgiveness is the exchange of life, the give and take between our soul and the universe. And nowhere in there does that mention any other person. So it's really within us. So if someone has done something wrong, we need to just let that go. Forgive them so that we can feel better has nothing to do with them. So let's close the eyes. Let your hands rest in your lap. Take a full breath in through your nose. Open your mouth and let it go. And just that feeling right there of letting go, of release. That would be unburdening ourselves of that grudge that we might carry, or that thought that we constantly relive the moment that we were wronged. Once we let that go, we can forget it and move on. So I'm sure the other person has done that. Bring your hands together in a prayer at your heart. Sit up tall, just connect to where you are in your body. Feel the hands connect, feel the sits bones fully supported by the floor. Feel what's under your knees. Release through the shoulders, tip the chin down towards the chest just a bit to feel a little longer in the back of the neck. Take a full breath in. Open your mouth, let it go. Let's breathe in for a moment. So we'll start in a seated position on the mat. If you get to play the start of whatever music you want to play. So have a seat right on your butt, bend your knees, bring your feet to the floor, and we'll bring them to the outer edges of the mat. You take your hands back behind you and we'll start to sway the knees from side to side. And then add other body parts into it. Engage through the glutes, bring the ribs forward, and press down in the base of the palm as you bring the shoulder forward, feeling the forearms and the wrists. Maybe you float up onto your fingertips. And then come back from center, step forward with your left foot. We'll come
onto a really light figure four crossing your right ankle over your left thigh. So I'm not really going for the pose here. You just want to roll that ankle. So as I said, we'll be working a lot with the feet today with balance, bringing the heels down, feeling fully rooted and connected to the floor. And then taking that wrist, that flight, point the toes, take your hand over the foot, take your hand to the ball, and then draw the toes back. And taking the wrist and the flight, of coming to a balance on the balls of the feet, maybe the toes. Then bring your hands back behind you. You can walk that left heel in a bit. Come a little closer to that figure four so it affects the hips a bit. Flex your right foot and float your butt up off the floor so you feel that left Achilles, that left ankle, that left foot. And lower yourself down. We'll drop both the knee and the foot over to the left side. And we'll take a twist over to the right. So on the inhale, lengthen the spine. On the exhale, just melt into the twist. It's very early on in the practice, so let's not force anything. And then we'll take it counter to the other side. Now walk your hands towards the back edge of your mat. We're going to turn this and come to a floating squat. So you'll be on the balls of the feet. Lift your heels high, press into your hands. And let's dip the knees down to the floor. Yes, we're really high on those heels, we feel the toes. And then we can sit back on the heels, shift the weight back a little bit, and bring a prayer to your heart. And this is an acquired taste too. Yeah, so you'll feel the toes. If it's a little too much, just lift the hips up. Don't put so much pressure on the heels. Allow yourself to melt into it. Don't be so aware of any discomfort that you might feel. And then bring your hands down. We'll float the knees up and let's straighten the legs. The feet are together. Draw the heels down towards the floor. If it's a lot in the hamstrings to start, bend the knees. And then let's flex the toes and the balls of the feet up. Draw the belly button into the spine and we'll push up onto the fingertips. So we have a little bit more room here to lengthen through the backs of the legs. Press your chest back towards your thighs as you would in a down dog, and let your head just kind of float in between the arms so you can find some movement. And begin to pedal out the legs, dropping the toes, but then lifting them again. And we can make this a little bit bigger and lift and lower the heels, roll the ankles a little bit more. And walk your hands forward. Bring the knees down to the floor. We'll have a seat on the heels, top of the toes. So nice and easy on this one. And then take the arms up overhead and we'll start to roll through the shoulder joint. So make some circles here and see what it feels like. You can make it smaller, bend the arms. Connect the fingertips to the shoulders for a little extra support. And if you're feeling a little more open, extend the arms for a wider range of motion. Engage through the shoulder blades as you reach back. Be aware of that movement, what contracts, what releases. And then change direction. Take the arms wide, take breath in, and we'll eagle wrap that right arm on the bottom of the breath in. Take breath in, float your fingertips up towards the ceiling, and start to find a little bit of a back bend. You feel it more in the shoulders, and in that back. And then on the breath out, we'll melt it down, bring your forearms down to the ceiling. Unravel the right arm, bring it forward. Take your left hand to the outside of the left knee. Fall back through those hips, find a twist, opening the chest over to the left. So you're sliding your ribs right on top of the thigh. Tense up onto your right fingertips and feel a little more room through the right armpit, the right shoulder. And bring the left hand forward to meet the knee. Take breath in. And the breath out, lower the back. Take the arms wide as you inhale. Let's eagle that left arm on the bottom. Breath in, reach the fingertips up towards the seat. Move back. And then we'll melt it down, bring the forearms down towards the seat. Release that left arm, bring it towards the back edge of your mat, float onto the fingertips, right hand comes next to that right knee. Breathe in to get long. Breath out, we'll twist nice and easy over to the right side. Slide the left hand back. 
We'll shift the weight and bring the legs out in front. Go to shake. Inhale the arms up overhead, flex the feet. On the exhale, take the forward fold. Nice, easy posture. We're not staying. And tuck your chin into your chest, round out the back. Pull your knees into your chest, and then take your feet wide. So we'll come back to that sway of the knees from side to side, and maybe you have a little bit wider range of movement. Yeah. Good. And then come back through center. Step your right foot forward and find that figure four across your left ankle over your right thigh. And roll your left ankle. You can use the right hand. Draw the toes back. Bring your thumb in the arch of the foot and lift up from there as you draw the top of the foot down to point there. Really allow for some blood to circulate through the feet and through the ankles. And bring your hands back behind you. We'll bring the right foot a little closer to the hip. Now we're a little bit more into that hip opener. Take your time here. And then float the hips up so we hover over the floor. Lean forward a little bit so you feel that Achilles tendon and keep the left foot after. Bring your butt back down to the floor. We'll drop the right knee over to the right side. We'll find a twist catching that right tricep to the left thigh, breath in. Breath out, that's where we were all. And the counter. Now we're facing the front of the mat. Let's turn it. Come into that floating squat. We're on the balls of the feet, the knees hovering over the floor. This time we'll come all the way down. Untuck the toes and sit on the heels. Now allow the heels to shift to the outer hip. So we're essentially sitting in the arches of the feet. And then press your fingertips into the mat. We can float the knees up. And then see how the ankles feel here. You can walk the fingertips back a little bit, lift the chest, maybe float your hands to your knees. Cool. And then release. Take the arms wide as you breathe in. And we'll come to the bow of the the vine and the breath out. Take your left hand back behind you, reach your fingertips up towards the back of your neck. Allow that right arm to travel up and over to join. Once you're there, drop your head back into your right forearm and drop both elbows back. It's heart opener, shoulder opener. Breathe a little bit better. And then nice, easy release, stay engaged through the fingertips. Keep reaching outward and we'll switch sides. We'll take a moment here. And if you need to adjust and assist that top arm, do it. Take the tricep and guide the fingers over towards that right shoulder and then towards the center of the shoulder blades. Once you make a connection or the fingers are close, draw the elbows back, drop your head back. Release the arms, float them up overhead as you move them. On the breath out, we'll come to a tabletop, walk the knees back a bit, knee tip, and come into your cat. And then feel whatever you feel from the shoulders to the feet. As you come into the binds, what that release feels like. That freedom. And make your way back to the downward facing dog. Pedal out the legs, sway the hips again. Any movement that releases any tension. Let yourself go. And lift your heels. Let's roll out through the plank. Drop the knees down. We'll take it back to a child's pose. On top of the toes, float up onto the fingertips. Press your palms down. Take your gaze forward. We'll slide through Bhujan Das and the low cobra. Breath in. Drop your shoulders down away from the ears. On the breath out, we will. Take it back, child's pose. Squeeze the elbows in towards the ribs. Press up onto the fingertips. Tuck the toes. Let's take it back to the down dog on the fingertips. Start to walk your feet forward, taking your time. 
Every step you take, the navel draws into the spine. A little higher on the tips of the fingers, maybe a little higher on the tips of the toes. And lower the heels, come to your forward fold, Uttanasana. We sweep the hands back behind us for an interlace. On the breath in, raise the knuckles up towards the ceiling and feel the shoulders moving away from the ears. Tip it forward as you let the arms shift overhead. Tuck your chin into your chest. Let's see if you can connect with the palms. We'll come to chair pose. Take your time softening the knees. You're nice and grounded here at the wall, four corners of the Feet sweep the arms up overhead. We then stand tall, straighten the legs. Let's lay this back, wing the arms wide, maybe come to a cactus shape. Inhale, high prayer, Urva Hasasana. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Lengthen on the breath in. On the breath out, step back, plank. Your vinyasa, knees, chest, chin, or chakaranga vinyasa. Take a big breath in. Big breath out. Let's lift the right leg. Bend the knee, open the hip. Lift your left heel, straighten the right leg for a down dog split. Pull your right thigh into your chest. Hover there for a hot second. Feel your thigh connect to the chest. Push the floor away. We'll step through and lower down. Anjana and releasing through the left hip. Keep the back toes tucked. Sweep the arms up overhead. We'll come to the cactus shape here and then go to the of those arms. Take that left hand back behind you. Right arm reaches over the head. Drop your head back into the arms. Use the back of the left hand, which is way in between those shoulder blades, to lift so the chest floats up towards the ceiling and it's fully supported. And we lay it back here. Let's windmill the arms down and come to a twisted lunge with the left hand down. Right arm floats up. Lift your back heel. Lift your front heel. Load up onto the left fingertips. Right hand comes down, step your right foot back, let it float, your vinyasa. Three. Thanks. Lift your left leg. Bend the knee, open the hip. Move around here if you want to add something, add it. You can lift the right heel if you want. Press your chest back a little bit more. Down dog split. Lift your right heel, cover in that plank, draw the left thigh into the chest. Step in between the hands, bring it down for a low lunge. Keep the back toes tucked. Sweep the arms up over them. Keep rolling back through the shoulders, come to that cactus shape. Lift your right hand back behind you. Left hand over the top. Support that back. If you're lifting up, drop your head back. Draw both elbows down. And releasing through that hip as well. Fully supported through the sole of the left foot. Ball of the right. And then we windmill the arms. Find that bit of an extra rotation. Right fingertips come down, left arm floats up. Twist your lunge. Press into your right fingertips, lift your left heel. Ah, yes. And then bring that left hand down, let's float the left foot, vinyasa. Deep breath in, flutter out the lips on the breath out. Bring the feet together to touch, lift the heels high. Soften the knees, take your gaze forward, and make your way to the top of the mat. You can walk it, you can float it. Inhale, lengthen. Lift your toes up off the mat. 
before. You're pressing down through the balls of the feet. As you fold, shift forward, drop the toes. Lift the tailbone up. Urdhva Nastasana, bring yourself up to stand. Reach back with the right hand, go across under the arms, and left hand comes back behind you. Breath in, drop your head back, breath out, and lean over to the left side. Keep the chin lifting out of the chest, maybe take your gaze underneath your right elbow. We'll come back through center, big release of the arms, and we'll just change sides. Breath in, head back, breath out. Breath in, release the arms. Let's come to chair pose, each katasana. Nice. Now lift your heels here. Take your time, just like Glenn said. And we'll float it into our dive. So the fingertips are reaching back as the chest comes forward. Straight the legs and your mouth. Continue to bring the chest a little closer to the thighs. We're coming to our forward fold, the hips up, and the heels up. Now bring the hands down to the floor. Let's float the left leg back. Keep your right heel up. Bend your right knee, and we'll come into this funky dancer pose. So you're pressing up onto your fingertips. We're light on the ball of the right foot. Keep projecting the left toes up towards the ceiling. Now lower your right heel and we'll come into perch, settling that left knee behind the right leg. If you're kneeling on the right calf, then settle yourself so you can float the hands up off. We'll step this back into warrior two. Lift your right heel up as you wind the arms back. And a lot of foot action here. Let's come to a high skandasana. Flex your right foot, draw the left foot back. The toes are reaching back towards your right shin. You can find a little movement here. Feel the inner thighs, those groins. We'll come back to warrior two. Lift your right heel. Peaceful warrior. Let's turn this into goddess. Drop your right heel, turn the left toes out. Yeah, so now we're solid, heels are down on the floor. Bring your hands to your thighs. We'll bring a twist, bringing that right shoulder forward. Use the hands to take the knees a little bit wider. We're not pressing on the joints, we're on those inner thighs. And just allow those hips to open and pull the hips back towards the back edge of your mat. Right shoulder shifts forward. Take a breath in as we come back through center. Breath out and twist in the other direction. Come back through center. Let's float the arms up overhead and lift both heels. So it's a lot easier when the ankles are underneath the knees. You have that alignment. Drop your heels. Stand tall for a flying warrior. And we'll shift into Trikonasana, triangle pose. So make sure the right toes are pointing straight ahead towards the front edge of the mat. And allow yourself to find that twist, that lengthening that lightness. We're not sinking into that right arm. In fact, we don't even need to put any weight into it. You can bring the back of the hand to the calf. Nice. Now soften the right knee and we'll float this into a high lunge. Lift your right heel. Draw the arms back to the chest. And then fold over that right leg. We'll come to a pyramid variation. Keep your back heel up and slide your right foot back just a bit so you can keep the heel high. Adjust the hip, pull the right hip back, left hip comes forward. And then settle into pyramid, drop both heels. You can walk the hands back a bit. Your adjustment would be your right piece fingers into your right hip crease. Give a little lift and then draw the hip back a bit. 
And that gives room for the left hip to shift forward. And press into the fingertips, breathe in, lift the chest. And we'll find a twist here with that left hand either to the outside of that right foot or keep it to the inside. If balance is an issue here. And then we'll float that right arm. Make sure you have enough room in between the ribs and the right thigh to find that movement of rotation. The hip, the ribs are moving. If they're stuck and collapsed into that thigh, there's nowhere to go. Now take your time bringing the right hand down. We'll reach forward with the right hand and then take that left hand towards the upper left hand corner of your mat. We'll float the left leg up and then grab it with the right hand. So we'll come into this twisted dancer pose. But instead of straightening the right leg, let's bend it. And then lift the chest, kick your left foot up towards the ceiling, final twist over towards the right side. Stay with me on this one, it gets a little funkier. Bring your right hand down to the floor. Take the top of the left foot down to the mat and lift your right heel. We'll connect the left knee to the right heel or the Achilles tendon. Okay? Now you will figure out how much weight goes into that foot as you walk the fingertips back and then float them up off of and then maybe lift the chest. So you're pressing into the top of the left foot so not all the weight goes into that right heel. Bring your hands back down, step the left foot forward to meet the right, forward fold Uttanasana. That was a thrill, right? <laughs> Let's come into chair pose Uttanasana. Breath in, straighten legs, reach the arms back, open the chest, open the arms. And then you're adjusting here, your assist. You can take the hands right to the hips, thumbs are at the sacrum. Lift yourself up to allow the pelvis to shift forward. So you're literally rolling over your thumbs. And draw the elbows back, shoulder blades towards each other. Drop your head if that feels okay. And then release, inhale the arms up over. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Breath in, find your space. Breath out, let it go into your flow. Bring your feet together to touch, lift the heels, soften the knees, look towards the front edge of your mat. Shift the hips back, they're still high, but you're using that momentum here. And then bring yourself to the top of the mat. Breath in, breath out, fold. Bird metastasana. Take the arms wide, let's come to Gomukhasana, right hand comes behind you, left arm reaches over the top. Breath in, drop your head back. Breath out, let's twist over. So lean over towards the left side. Lift the chin, put on the opposite way to bed. Come back through center. Big release of the arms, breath in, reach back, shoulder blades draw towards each other. Go across the right arm on top, left arm on bottom. Drop your head back. Bring back over to the right side. Keep drawing the elbows back. Breath in, release the arms. High prayer. Good katasana and chair pose. Maybe we come a little lower here, or a little more comfortable, a little more open in the shoulders. We draw those thumbs back to the arms, past the ears. Float it into diving. Take your time as we float the heels up, and here comes that balance. So use the fingertips and let it, instead of letting those arms just hang, find the counterbalance. Something's going down, something's reaching up. Good. 
Bring your fingertips down to the floor. Let's float that leg up. Push up onto the fingertips, lift the chest. So the left heel is lifted, left knee is bent. Lower your left heel, come to perch, right knee sits behind the left. We can get rid of those hands, float them up off the floor. And start to lift the chest from here. Yes, and engage through the arms, keep reaching back. We'll step this back to warrior two, float the left heel up. Send us so straighten the left leg, flex the left foot. And then you move from here. Take it back, warrior two, lift your left heel high. Peaceful warrior. Let your arm float down a little bit so we're not stopping ourselves from finding that extension. Come to goddess pose, pose out, heels in. Nice. And let's cross the hands. So reach your right hand over towards your left foot. Take your left hand behind it. Float up onto the fingertips. Let's lift the heel. See if we can straighten the legs. Heels are high, we're floating on the fingertips, the arms are crossed. Drop the heels, come back to goddess, float the arms up. There's your breath. Breath down, and take the opposite. Right hand is behind the left. Reach for the feet, float up onto the fingertips, release through the hips. Lift your heels. And then take your time, we'll straighten the legs any amount. Let's come back to goddess pose. Float the arms up to the cat fish. Breath in, flying warrior. Breath out, triangle, left leg. Let yourself find the shape. So any adjustment here. Notice what's happening in the body. You always have an opportunity to move. Let it go. And let's come to a high lunge. Float the left heel, close the right heel. Big balance here, so take your time. Frame the left foot, keep the heel high. And we'll start to straighten the left leg, slide the foot back a little bit. We have better access for alignment here. Keep both heels high. If you're in your pyramid, you can drop your head. And then lower the heels down to the mat. Walk your hands back, take an extra breath, lengthen. And then shift forward to fold. So the left crease fingers to the left hip crease, draw the left hip back. That's your assist. Press up into the fingertips, lift the chest. We'll come to that twist. The right hand is either staying to the inside of the left foot or let it shift to the outside of the foot. Once you're here, lift the chest. So now we have space in between the ribs and the thigh to get that rotation. You can even use your left hand to guide your torso over towards the left side. You can even wrap that left arm around your back and feel the shoulder move, feel the whole torso move, and then float that left arm up. The crown of the head is still reaching forward as the left hip is reaching back. And then bring the hand down and turn back towards the front. <laughs> yes. Reach your right hand forward and we'll float that right leg, catch it with the left hand. So there's your twisted dancer. Left knee stays bent. 
Take your foot into your hand and then the left with the chest to lift. So you're light in the right fingertips. Ah, lay this back. Left knee is bent, so you don't have to worry about balance that much. Hamstring feels a little happier with the knee bent. Good. All right, the left hand comes down to the floor. Top of your right foot comes down, lift your left heel and connect your right knee to the left heel. So position yourself, feel it out. Maybe you move that right foot a bit and then float up onto the fingertips. And then the hands come up off the floor. And then maybe the chest lifts off of that left thigh. Maybe we float the arms up. Refold, right foot meets left, chair pose, Utkatasana. Ah. Let's come to diver. Bring your hands down, let your knees find your armpits, and we'll shift right into a crow pose. You can do whatever you want to do with your crow. You want to extend one leg back if you're just playing with it, just lift one foot at a time. Use the strength of the abs to help lift the hips so the legs don't feel heavy. Nice. And then you can float that back into your vinyasa. Breathe in your dog. Either choose stillness or a little bit of momentum with the head shake. Right. Bring your feet together to touch. Let the heels soften the knees. Take your gaze forward. Step or float your way to the top of the mat. Breath in. Breath out forward. Bird on the stas and a high prayer. Take the arms wide, go across on the right arm on the top, left arm on the bottom. Let's lean over to the left side. Breath in, and we move the arms at the same time. We'll connect the dots. The breath continues, and so do the movements. And we'll lean over to the right side. Inhale the arms up overhead. Let's come to chair pose for two months. Bring the arms back, diving. See if there's a little bit better balance here. We're revisiting these shapes. Bring the right fingertips down, float the left foot up, come to that dancer. High right heel, lift the chest. Maybe we can lift one hand. Maybe we can lift both hands. <laughs> And then step it back. Let's come into perch pose. Right heel comes down, left knee behind the right, wing the arms. So we're getting low. Solid in the right heel. Get ready to lift it again for warrior two. Skandasana, drop the heel, flex the foot. Come back to warrior two, breath in. Peaceful warrior. Goddess heels come down, cactus the arms. Let's bring the hands down to the floor and we'll play with Skandasana here. Lift and lower the heels and the toes. And come to cross or reach a wide legged forward fold. If you want to bring the head down, take any inversion here. If you want to bring it into a headstand, a forearm balance, a handstand. Just stay with that wide-legged forward fold. Nice. And float up onto your fingertips if your feet are still in the air. Take your time bringing them down. Make that connection. And we'll just hold it here, left of the spine. Float the arms out to the teeth. Breath in, rise all the way up. High prayer. Turn your right foot to face the front edge of the mat and come into triangle trikonasana. Maybe we wrap that left arm around the back. Come to a bit of a bind here. 
Maybe come to Dungukasana. So you're really using the strength of the legs. Drop the head back into that right wrist, that right forearm, draw the elbows down. Nice. You're reaching out with the right elbow, reaching the opposite direction of the left hand. And let's release. We'll come to a high lunge, lifting the right heel. So shift forward. Maybe you bring that right foot back a bit. Here in pose, frame your right foot. Both heels stay high as you lengthen that right leg. Maybe slide the right foot back. Slide the right foot back a little bit more. Walk your fingertips back. Now let's fold over that right thigh. Drop the heels, breath in, lengthen the spine. Breath out, fold into your pyramid. Breath in, lengthen the spine, reach the left arm forward, and we'll find a twist, taking the right arm. Maybe wrap that right arm around your leg. You can reach for the left hip, maybe half the Lukasana. Reach the right fingertips up towards the back of the neck. And keep the twist here. Keep your left hand where it is. Soften the right knee. Reach out with the left hand to the front corner of the mat and come into that dancer with a twist. You bend the right knee, lift the chest. Float up onto the left. Right hand comes down to the floor. Lift your right heel. Connect the left knee to the heel. Drop the top of your right foot down. Float your fingertips up. Chair pose. Left foot meets right. Float your right knee into your chest. And we'll come to an eagle. Oh, big bind here. Wrap the right arm underneath the left. And then take your time as you sink the hips. And elevate the fingertips and the elbows. Let's unravel the arms, kick your right foot back, and we'll come into Dancer, not our Jocelyn. And here's where you can get funky. You're coming into regular dancer here, or you can curl the right hamstring, catch the toes right in the crook of the elbow, and we'll come back to that Gomukhasana arm. Bend your left knee, connect the hands, and lift the chest. Or maybe lift the left heel. You can play with that. Nice. And then wherever you are, we'll release to a warrior three with a bent left knee. Just to get some extension here. Bring the right foot down and hands down to frame the left foot. Kick your left leg back down, dog split. Bend the knee, open the hip, and we'll take this into a rock star. So that left heel is high. Keep lifting the hips up towards the ceiling as you reach the left level. Over here. Nice. Bring your left hand down. We'll come down onto the knees. Then have a seat on the heels. Walk your left fingertips back. And let's shift into camera. Draw the shoulder blades towards each other, drop your head. Hips to heels. Bring your hands forward. Vinyasa. Breathe. A lot of ups and downs here. <laughs> That's life, right? Bring those feet together to touch. You know what to do. Make your way to the top of the back. 
Inhale, to get long. Let it all go and fold. Bird on the stasa. Keep your right hand behind you, go across and above the arms. Let's lean over to the right side, draw the left elbow back. The same side's open. And then big release. Change to the other side, right arm on top. Whatever. Take the arms up overhead, share pose for two thousand. Side. Take your time here. Don't even think about it. You know what's coming next. Heels go higher, hips go higher as the fold gets a little deeper. Left heel stays high. Come on to the fingertips. Lift your right leg. Lift the chest. Come into that dancing. Then if you did it on the other side, you play with lifting one hand. Maybe you lift both. Fingertips come down to the floor, drop your left heel, come to perch, we're nice and solid here. Load the arms back, lift your chest. Step back, warrior two, lift your left heel. Stand off center, left leg straight, right knee down. Warrior two, heel floats, right into peace. Goddess pose. Lift the heels. Float the arms up overhead. Come to the king and move it. Bring the tips of the fingers together. And stay with the balance. Let's lower the heels. Take a deep forward fold. Bring your forearms down. Turn your toes to be parallel, straight, and light. Let's bring that right hand to the left foot, find a twist, float up high onto the fingertips, lift the left arm up, breathe in. Breathe out as you twist. And then let it all go as you float back to center, take it to the other side. Float up onto the fingertips, and reach the leg up, reach back. And then come back. Float the arms out to the teeth. Flying warrior on the broken. Turn the left toes to face the front edge of your mat. Pyramid pose. Uh, try and hang in the mess up here. I'll spear a bit of the twist. Now we'll bend that left knee, come to a high lunge. Lift the left heel. Frame the left foot. Let's slide that left foot back as we straighten both legs. Deep fold over the left, walk the fingertips back. Heels are high. And then we'll settle in. Now it's pyramid. Take an extra breath, lengthen. Maybe flex the left toes up. And then fold on the both arms. Inhale to lengthen, reach your right arm forward, and we'll come into the twist. So you choose where that right hand is going. And then we'll lengthen here. Push away from the floor, float that left arm. Maybe take the hand back behind you. Come into that half Gomukhasana and let you go on that triangle of Gomukhasana. The chest is open, feel lengthened. Notice your breath. And then shift your gaze towards the front edge of your mat, soften your left knee, reach out with the right hand, and then connect to the right foot. Lower that right foot down to the floor. Settle into the left heel. You're lifting it high. And we come to the balance. Walk your hands back, lift your chest. Take your time. Mm -hmm. 
right foot leads left chair pose. Lift the left knee up. Let's come into eagle. Release the arms. Release the leg. Kick back, Narajasana. You'll come into dancer pose. If you're taking the variation, curl the hamstring. Connect the top of the foot with the crease of the left elbow. You can flex the foot in there. Better grip. Soften your right knee. Go across on the arms. And kick your foot into your left hand. Lift your chest, lift your gaze, bend your right knee. And then maybe float that right heel. If you choose. You'll unravel to a warrior three. Right knee is soft. Step back, frame your right foot down, dog split, right leg goes high. Open the hip. Rock spot. Take your time coming into it. Stay high or below that right foot. And then we'll release. Right hand comes down, drop down onto your knees. Child's pose. We'll release here before we come into the shape that we're going for. Mm -hmm. And tuck your chin into your chest, we'll roll it up. We're coming to a camel variation here, where the knees are lifting up off the floor. So we came to the shape before, where we were here. So it's the same idea, but we're in camel. We also did the variation before with the hands on the feet. As we came into camp. So that's where we'll start. Hands on the feet, draw the shoulders back, lift the pelvis. Then your hands, your fingertips can be on the floor and you're on the soles of the feet, and then start to float the knees up off of the floor. So keep lifting up into your camel. The ribs are going up, you're finding that beautiful back bend with your knees lifting so you're basically balancing on your fingertips and the tops of your feet. Big time on the quads. Yeah, that's it. Take your time. So don't come into the full back bend yet, Trini. Just go half of the back bend so you can lift the legs. Otherwise, there's too much weight going back. Yes, that's it. Now everything goes up. Knees go up, keep lifting the chest, take your time. <laughs> you got the idea. And then when you are done with that, just bring it down to a child's pose. Say hi onto your fingertips, drop your head in between the arms. Your body is silent. There's a lot of activity going on over here today. And then float your hands back behind you for an interlace, just to find some space between the shoulders and the ears, draw the knuckles back. And then tip your head to the right and the left. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders, float up onto your fingertips, and come into a cat back. Chin to chest, navel to spine. Walk your fingertips forward just an inch and curl the hamstrings. Ooh. Press into the balls of the feet to shift the weight back. You'll be on the soles of the feet. Maybe the hands don't touch the floor, and we'll balance that squat. Mm -hmm. We're going to have an inch. Just sit back. Send the legs out in front of you. You have a bit of a shake here. Take the fingertips, interlace them. Take the arms up overhead on the breath in. On the breath out with forward. Now release your hands. Tuck your chin into your chest. 
Walk your feet to the outer edges of the mat the way we started. And we'll sway the knees from side to side. And then hold it center. Reach underneath that right leg, grab hold of your left ankle, draw the heel towards your right hip. We're coming into actual Dhammakasana. So if sitting down and stacking the knees doesn't feel comfortable for you. Take it from a tabletop. So you'll bring that right knee down to the floor, cross the right leg over the top, and then bring yourself down to sit. So whatever works for you. You're sitting right in between those feet. And if this is too much for the knees, just take half. So you can come into half lotus. And if that doesn't do it for you, Vadakanasana. Anything with the hips open, the knees wide. And then the opposite, the knees are stacked. Yes. So now the right leg is on top, so let's take that left arm. Reach back, right arm goes on above. Make the connection of the hands, drop the head back, lift the chest, take the breath in. And notice if that right butt cheek is floating up off the floor, bring it down. Yeah. And then on the breath out, we'll take this forward. Chin can pass the right knee. Just notice if the sits bones are floating up off the floor, we want to sit down. If that's impossible, release the arms. Walk your fingertips forward and lengthen here. So you're pushing back. And then float the arms out to a T wherever you are. You're coming out of that arm line. Let's lift halfway, take a bit of a twist, slide your right shoulder towards your right knee. And then come back through center and slide the left shoulder towards your right knee. We'll come on up. Catch the back of your right knee and we'll slide it up. Yeah. We'll come right into the spinal twist, catching the left bicep to the right knee. So nice and easy, let it be gentle. More of a release. Maybe counter to the left. And we'll catch hold of that right shin, step your right leg over your left. And then come back into hands and knees. Right knee will stay where it is. We're just changing sides, coming into Guru Kasana across the left leg over the And bring yourself down. So if your hips are super open, take the feet out wider. Yeah, some people can sit in this shape and not feel a thing. And God bless those people. That's it. So both butt cheeks are down on the floor. Take that right arm up overhead. Take the left hand back behind you. Come to the bottom. Breath in, drop the head back, lift the chest. Breath out, we're coming forward. So reach with the right elbow. So we're not going down to the floor. The chest will hover over that left thigh. Maybe your face will come past the knees. We want to stay engaged here instead of collapsing. Keep the sits bones down. And then if you came to that modification before, unravel the arms, press into your fingertips, press the hips down. Rock your chin. Slide your hands out to a T. We're still in that fold here. Let's take the left shoulder towards the left knee. And turn your head to the right. And then we'll take a slight shift, right shoulder, left knee. Turn your head to the left. Come back through center, we lift it on. Left hand, just lift the left knee, slide the left foot in a bit, come to that spinal twist, Ardhamati and Dhrati. Right tricep, left thigh. Counter. Let's guide that left leg, stacking on top of the right. And keep both legs out in front of you. We'll go a little wider this time. Take your feet to the outer edges of the mat, flex the toes up. 
Press into your hands, lift the hips, and draw the sits bones back, bring the chest forward. And now we can grab hold of the big toes with these fingers. Take breath in to lengthen. Breath out, bring yourself forward, not down. You can even walk the ribs. Take a sway from right to left. Feel the length of the hamstrings in the spine. Once you're there, maybe you can grab around those feet, the heels, the arches. Just drop your neck. Your chin into your chin. Slide the hands up until you catch the backs of the knees. Press into your heels, your toes, or flips. Draw the navel to the spine, hold on to the hamstrings. And we're rolling back as slowly as we can. Maybe let go of the legs. Feel that one more spine, the sacral connect. Do a little pelvic tilt. You can track the hair using the strength of the abs, slowing everything down until you are all the way down. Reach the arms up overhead, feet are still wide. Catch hold of the knees and come into a happy baby. Grabbing the feet either from the inside or the outside, maybe you float this from side to side. And take your hands to your ankles and let's roll them. Maybe there'll be a few more cracks left. Flex and point the feet. Take your toes to your wrists and take your hands over the balls of the feet. Kind of cup them. The tips of your fingers are in your arches. And then bring the knees towards the armpits or the triceps. And your whole same release down to the foot. So it's as if you're doing a squat on your hands. And we'll straighten the legs any amount, guiding the toes over your head, over your shoulders. So feet are still wide. Maybe the backs of the hands will connect. And then slide your hands and your feet together. And a little shift here, connecting your toes to your wrists or your forearms. And reach out and fingertips. And slowly bring the back down to the floor. Point the toes this time. Keep reaching out with the fingertips, project the toes out towards the front edge of your mat, not down. Keep reaching out, draw the navel to the spine. And you are ready for Shavasana. So if there's any other shape or pose or stretch you want to take before settling in, always do not. If you're not ready, you're not ready, get yourself ready. I'm going to take a big breath in and let it go. Start to breathe a little more deeply. Mm -hmm. 
and bring small movements back when it feels good to you. Staying connected to the breath, let the movements get a little bit bigger. And we'll take that full body stretch, reach the arms high above your head. Stretch out through the toes in the opposite direction. Biggest breath of the day. Then an alliance breath, let it all go. And plant your feet to the floor. And plant your roots. And roll on to whichever side you prefer. Bring yourself up to sit. Bring a prayer to your heart. Let's bow our hands with gratitude and in honor of everything that happened on the mat. Allowing ourselves to shift and slow down and release to find that balance. Knowing that when we hold a grudge or we hang on to something or keep wounds open and burning, we're never balanced, we're burdened. We're constantly reliving whatever it was that hurt us in the first place. So if we can just let that go, forgive, find the lightness within ourselves. It has nothing to do with the person who hurt us. It's between us and the universe. So be light. Take a big breath in. Let it go. Let's breathe in for all.